So this very big red square here is perhaps not quite to the right scale, but what it indicates is a facing. So when you put your hand inside the pocket, you don't see the pocket bag, you don't see the pocket lining, just like what we did on the front pocket. However, in terms of pattern cutting for this pocket, that's it done in terms of the master pattern. Um, we don't we don't draw these jets like they're sewn. They're done in a different way. So when we look at the pattern pieces for this, this represents this shape. So at the moment it's without any kind of seam allowance or extra and that line there denotes where the jet is going to go. And this piece here is the facing, so it represents this piece here. So if you look in a pair of your trousers and you have a, and you feel around in the back pocket or you look underneath it, or you pull it apart, you will find that the facing goes above the jet line and is approximately the same size as the opening, if not a little bit wider. And it's a bit like when we looked at the fly. Some things are a centimetre, half a centimetre bigger than other pieces so that they're not all lying over the top of each other. If we look at this pattern piece now, before we consider adding on seam allowance, we would need to think about the fact that it is still the same width as the jet. So if we were adding seam allowance on it, we would probably not just add one centimetre, we would probably add 1.5 all the way around, but on the top. it would be one centimeter. So you'd add a minimum of 1.5 on. Um, also, because this is curved, we would be cutting two pairs in pocketing. That really offends me. If you had squares, you could cut them on the fold, but you can only do that in a lined garment. This is one piece. In some pattern cutting books or some methods, people have one whole piece and the under piece is split in half for long way you're sewing. So this is just one method. This was the same method that was used in the workshop for sewing. So we've got the facing, and now this piece here is the jet. And in real life, a jet can be as deep as you want it, but in real life, for a pocket like this, the jet might be five to six centimetres deep. So each jet would be about 2.5 centimetres deep. So that basically means that although this is one pattern piece at the moment, when you cut it or when you're sewing it, you will cut it in half, equally in half. I don't think that's equal. So this measurement here is six from here to here matching that so on the ends the seam allowance in real scale so purple for real scale would be about 1.5 again similar to that in manufacturing it's one centimeter when we are making our own stuff we tend to put 1.5 on because it's better for the pressing and the sewing um, there are details online about a machine that makes these pockets. Um, so this is the jet. So one pattern piece, when, when cut in the fabric, will make one 
jet. So we will need to cut one pair of this. This piece is commonly fused, so it has fusing on it. Whereas this pattern piece here will have the grain line going that way. It's quite common for the facing. If you imagine this is pinstripes and the pinstripes are running down, it's quite common that the grain line will match that. The grain line for jets is always running across because the grain line is stronger with the weave going that way. I mean, there's nothing to stop you putting it that way or for whatever reason for um, print or for matching. Now, some people do cut jets on the bias, but that involves sewing it in the women's wear way. Um, this would be for the tailoring way. So when we look at these pattern pieces, what we basically have are two oblongs and the pocket bag. Um, and so it's not very clear necessarily how you would sew that without knowing how to sew it. Um, so I would recommend that you look at the handouts for that and look back to when you did the shorts workshop for that as well.